Hello everybody and welcome back to the Damn Chanel 48 show world. Y'all know who I am, auntie, grandmama, cousin, mama, however you look for me to be in your life or who I remind you of. I'm back spreading holiday cheer. Wanted to get some finished videos that I have been wanting to work on prior to me getting sick. But y'all got me in all my essence and me still trying to pump these videos out for your entertainment and to drop some little nuggets of wisdom along the way. Okay, because I know you're in that hustle and that bustle and that grind trying to get that holiday dinner together as well as get them toys together for them children and them grandchildren and you know however you're doing it in your household blessings to each and every one of you all and may you all continue to be very prosperous into the new year okay good now we got to get to my favorite episode of don't be telling my business why are you telling my business? Because I can't can and I can't can. I can't can. I can't can. And I will. Okay. We jump right out here with a scandalous story. And a blast from the past. As well as it being a marvelous enlightenment type of scenario story we're bringing to you all. Now y'all remember when Portia was married to the NFL football player. Um... Cordell Stewart, and in this book she's writing her memoir, her biography on her life, that is her life, that she says everything in that book is true. Okay, that's what she's saying, y'all. It ain't for entertainment purposes. This actually happened in her life, and she's spilling all the tea herself. So, why did this man have her in therapy, similar to the therapy sessions she went through with Dennis, and more than likely will happen with Simon, alright? But, the only thing that I can say that's different from Dennis and Portia, I mean Dennis and Simon, Cordell actually married her. And from the streets he retrieved her, and to the streets he received her back to them, okay? Or he resent back to Cinder, which was the streets. He returned her ass right back to the streets. But let's give a back story, okay? She was married to him. She said, off of marriage, he treated her like a trophy wife. Didn't really respect her, even though she was very submissive. Hmm. So, is she rebelling when she's with Dennis? Prior to getting that title as wife. And will she do the same thing with Simon. If she receives that ring. The band that solidifies themselves as being a married couple. And of course that wedding certificate that says they're a married couple. Well I don't know if her and Cordell had a prenup or not. Hopefully maybe he did. Don't really matter because from what I'm understanding, he took care of her. That's what she's writing in her book. I don't know, hadn't read the book, but that's what she pretty much told us, that he took care of her. Now, in the book, she says, after she didn't know anything, she was totally blindsided of him filing for divorce while she had recently got on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, similar story, okay? Well, how about I was minding my own business, y'all. And it's allegedly, okay? I don't know. I'm just listening at other Utah YouTube bloggers have their spiel. But I was over in Tisa Tales, uh video. And I love to read the commentary or the comments in the chat section of her <laughs> beloved uh, Tattletales is what she calls them. And I got to scrolling down and hit one that like knocked me off my socks. Okay, gave me true tea. Whether it was true or not, I don't know. But it came from a um watcher of hers or a tattletales fan of hers. Um her avatar name is Black Smile and she wrote, Hey Tisa, when Portia was thrown out of Cordell's house, she went to her mom's house because she lost the condo. 
she had when they were married. Now, from my understanding, from what Tisa Tell said, Cordell Stewart was actually paying monthly for that condo. And he wanted her to have that condo. So what happened to it? Well, let's keep reading and see what she says. Watch the Real Housewives of Atlanta episode where Peter went to visit Cordell at his house and got his side of what happened and why he filed for divorce. Cordell told Peter Portia knew he was going to file and that her saying she found out on Twitter was a lie. Now I ain't going to lie to you. You pretty much know when you're in a bad relationship or in a bad marriage when something is going to come up that you're not going to be with that person. Okay? Everybody has a hint or an idea, a sliver of an idea that something ain't clean in that milk that you're drinking. Okay? Something is sour. The man or the woman is trying to leave the relationship or whatnot. They ain't treat you like they used to. They ain't trying to be around you like they used to. And they definitely have a cold shoulder in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Meaning, we only cohabitating in this house. Don't come in this room. Don't want to see you. Not making any meals for you. Not washing any of your clothes. And all of that jazz, okay? So Portia's not go and not eating dinner together either. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Okay, or snacks either. We ain't got no family time. We don't have no alone time. We ain't got no date nights planned. I mean death is going on. But and I think she was considered to be a housewife. So he probably wouldn't take it to her taking her to none of the NFL sports events where you bring your, you know, your significant other or your spouse or whatnot. She probably wasn't getting uh, asked to come to none of those things. And she probably was feeling some kind of way because she probably still had friends of other uh, teammates that Cordell was associated with. And she was probably trying to figure out why she didn't get invited to these things that she got invited to before. So she's not going to tell me. Because even when you're in a marriage and you know everything done went sour, you know things have been talked about, have been expressed. Somebody went out of a relationship, may have even said it, written it on the walls, on the bathroom, shower door, on the tub. I want out. I'm getting a divorce. We need to get a divorce. We need to go to counseling. Or we need to get no counseling. You keep the key. You, it's something going on. You're not just going to be like in the fog. Okay. So. Going back to the article. It said. Um, <coughs> she lied about. Uh, saying she didn't know when it was posted on Twitter. Or when she saw it being posted on Twitter. That was the first time she knew of anything. Of a divorce that Cordell wanted from her. She said Cordell's, uh, Cordell told Peter Portia knew he was going to file and that her saying she found out on Twitter was a complete lie. Cordell said she paid the mortgage, said he paid the mortgage on the condo, but she lost the condo for her failure to pay the taxes on it. Cordell also said he never put her on the deed to his home or accounts because she was irresponsible with paying her bills and he wasn't going to lose all he worked for because of her. He gave Peter the full rundown so nope she moved in with her mom because she lost that condo because she failed to pay taxes. Only choice was to move in with her mother Diane. Now I'm not going to say this particular uh, tattletale was on them pulling shit, blowing smoke up people's ass just to be seen in the comment section. Because most of our YouTube followers or viewers of our show, or how I like to say, my family members, they come in and they check me, honey. They We be playing chess over here. They checkmate me, I check them, you know, or we just be going back and forth. And then sometimes we have to agree to disagree. And be respectful of each other and move on to the next video. Because I'm sure it's going to be another video that somebody else going to have something to say. Or how I uh, express my opinion. But like I tell everybody. I'm family. Okay. Or maybe your fictitious family. Because we really don't know each other. But when you come in 
and you have an interaction with me, it's going to be cordial. It's going to be fun. It's going to be laughable. It's going to be enjoyable because that's what family do. Do family members always are 100% on the same page of the book we read? Hell no. Some of us don't skip to the very end of the book. Some of us do our due diligence, read it from the beginning, middle, and end, and then come up with come back with a synopsis of what transpired through that reading of that book. Then you have the ones that get the book, look at it, see how many pages, like they ain't finna fuck with that. They'll just wait for the uh what do you call it? The ebook <laughs> or video, okay? Then you have the ones that start it but never finish it. Okay, that's just how families are. We're blended in that sense of rationalization. We always going to have a topic. It's always going to be giving us what it is, is what we physically, optically, optically can see. And then we put our own perspectives on it, our own opinions. We're not saying it's right. We're not saying we're 100% right. We're just saying with the information that's given to us, this is how we perceive it. Okay? Am I right? Am I wrong? Check me if I'm not. But this young lady got in giving information on Portia. And I was like, uh, that is interesting. So why would Portia say, well, we already knew homegirl wasn't homeless. Because if you don't make it out there on your own, you can always go back home if you left home in a nice way. Okay, now if you left it in disarray, you tore up the house and did all ungodly things or whatever, you might not have that opportunity to come home to your parents or your parents. You know, it depends on how you left. All right, because they got the right to say, no, you're not coming back in my house. You don't cause too much chaos, too much turmoil. I wish you well, but you can't come back here. Now, that's on like a sliding scale, and we know certain issues that would get you that type of endorsement of why you can't come back and you're not coming back but the majority of the time parents do let their waverly over zealous children come back when they want to opt themselves out of the house and go out there and thrust themselves into reality which is another whole way of living because they're not used to doing anything most of our children okay we're we're hand feeding them we're we're giving them all their necessities and their wants still and they don't know how to handle um fitting for themselves and uh doing the thing on their own as far as being responsible adult or young adult people and sometimes it takes a while it takes time and it takes maturity for them to get it. But once they get it, got it good, they moved on. They just coming back to visit, get that good cooking every holiday season or whenever they want to show up. And that's pretty much it. But then when you have certain kids that fall on hard times <coughs> or not, they just did stupid shit out there and they don't have nowhere to go. They know they can come back home. So that's where Portia finally found herself. Now, don't know if it's true or not, but that's what the streets are hollering and saying. And that's what this particular tattletale set up because they were talking about, uh, I forgot what Tisa Tales was talking about in her video. But she was just letting her know this added piece of information of what she was talking about. And for, uh, she was asking Tisa Tales to go and see what she was talking about pretty much. I need a cough drop, y'all. And uh, I just happened to be scrolling down and, and saw it. I'm like, golly, Portia just keep getting herself into shit. I want to blame other people. I'm like, baby girl, you couldn't see that your husband wasn't happy with you. He wasn't happy with you on the show, okay? And that was pretty much shown on the show. And then... When everything really went south, you start throwing him up under the bus talking about his sexuality. That he was not really interested in you anymore in that way that men should be interested in their women. Especially if you're doing all the part and playing all the parts and looking all the parts. I mean, you look delectable right there. You've always had a pretty face. A pretty body. Lack of conversation because uh, you pretty much don't even try to 
put yourself in a situation to know about certain things, to have a well-rounded conversation with the individual. And pretty much Cordell probably saw you, I wouldn't put it past it, as a trophy wife. Meaning look pretty, be decent, don't say anything. Okay, just be my arm candy. And, and that's all you need to do. That's all I'm marrying you to do. And if we have kids, okay. But it was a concern about him having kids with you. Like, was he looking at it where you all really weren't compatible? And he didn't want to interbreed with you? He didn't want to use you as a mother for his children? Tell me, honey. What was the real tea? He didn't want to procreate with you to bring other little portions or, you know, portraits into the picture. He didn't think your IQ level was something he wanted to entertain and have a child by. Was he scared his children were going to come out like you pretty with no brains? I mean, I want to know. I mean, it would have been a bad way to look at it because I would think. The biological aspects of making the baby would come from you and him both. I mean, was he just saying you were an airhead and he had all the sense? I don't know. I'm asking you, Portia, because you were saying this man treated you like gold. He paid for everything. He saw that you were a really kept woman. He saw that you had it and everything. But he wanted you to be submissive. Now, what you showed us of him on the show... Girl, please, I would have been packed up my bag and not even said, we finna get married. Would have gave his ring back, and I would have trotted on off into the sunset to my next conquest. But no, you became that woman, like your mom, thinking she had somebody just because he was playing in the NFL, and that he was making buku money or whatever. Uh, You felt you had hit it, you had hit the gold mine. You had come up on something big, better, and you were part of a whole brand new socialite of friends by being in his company. But lo and behold, that's all he treated you like. He didn't want to hear from you. He didn't really want to talk to you. He just wanted you to show up, show out with all your fabulous looks, your wardrobe, and your body. Other than that, he didn't want you to say anything, even though you were on this platform and you had a voice. You didn't use it. You came as this hierarchy type person, holy Bible person, beating, brow beating everybody down that was doing a little of anything that you felt was it ladylike, was it godly like. You know, you were the thumping Bible type person. Or you gave that persona out to the girls on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You felt or they felt that you were so holy that thou, you couldn't do anything. Or they was ashamed to do anything about uh, around you that was deemed uh, ungodly because they didn't want you to chastise them. Now, you acting like Satan's daughter running out here. I mean, you dressing all provocatively. You out there really showing that, yeah, you for the men that have money. You for the men that got money and that can take care of you. Hence, your fiancé. Older gentleman. But you were just with this man who you said had money. Was a big baller. You were flaunting him all around Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you had a baby by this man. Okay. Now, broken family. Broken relationships. Now you finna go into another relationship and you broken. Period. So what do you think gonna happen to that relationship? Because it's already derailing. And your ex fiance is going to be seeing you in court in the new year. 2022 allegedly because he's not happy he's not happy with your surroundings he's not happy with the position you're putting his baby girl in and the surroundings around that and he must got some true receipts on you if he really really ready and willing to go to the court system and deem himself as a primary pay primary parent as well 
Because if you look at it on the bigger spectrum of the situation, both of y'all are single parents. You ain't just single taking care of PJ. Dennis is not single just taking care of PJ. Y'all are one, but single and separate. You get that, Portia? If you did get it, let me break it down to you again. You are not married. That means you both split everything 50-50 when it comes to your daughter. You had two very good lucrative jobs that you pretty much could, uh, you didn't have to take anything from Dennis. You could have provided solely for your daughter, but you didn't see it that way. You were like, no, nah, he going to be paying this, he going to be paying that. I ain't doing it all. And he didn't expect you to. And then, as an added bonus, he was still doing lovely things for you as well. That he didn't have to do. Because you were just the mother of his child. Even though he cheated on you. And it was very much so broadcasted. Through all the social media outlets. And hell in Atlanta. If anybody was keeping their ears to the ground. If you get my drill. Okay. But. He would still be a half decent to you. Treat you as if he was. Or you were his wife. Just without the title. And you would have been his wife. If you would have signed the prenup. But you so half ass fast. You ain't want to sign no prenup. But what you think Simon going to do? He had. Uh, what's her name? Fallon. Sign a prenup. Do you think you going to escape that prenup signature? No bail. Uh uh. He already probably got it ready. Willing and able. To have you sign it. Or you going to be kissing his ass goodbye too. Whether he have billions, billions, or whatever. He ain't going to let you go past that dotted line. So you going to still have to come up and do something. So, I said all this to say that. I said all that to say this. Portia, Portia, Portia. Get it right, okay? Because Cordell done blasted you out. Dennis is getting ready to blast you out. What do you think Mr. Simon Gobadia is going to do to you when it's all done and said? And do you think Dennis is going to have you have full custody of you all's daughter and how he knows when you love hard and when things go wrong and it crashes, you crash hard. I don't know what he has seen that you go through and the process you go through to get back to that even playing field in your brain where somebody has done you wrong has put you at a very low level of thinking and feeling he seen you at your lowest part so he like he was telling your sister lauren you know when she loves she loves hard and when she crashed she crashed even harder so with that said he's concerned He's very, very concerned about his daughter and her well-being. And he probably still care a little bit about you. But baby girl, if this is true, and you lost your condo because you did not pay the taxes on it, then yes, did it have something to worry about. Because if you are not astute with your financial this, how are you going to take care of your daughter? Okay. How are you going to help your daughter survive in this world? You can't keep living off men. You had two good jobs. You thought you were going into something big and better. Because you say your family had pushed you into it. They had set a date for both you and Simon. And now all this shit is going on with your Portia, Portia family values. The ratings are in the toilet, baby. The ratings are in the toilet. And yet, you still keep pressing gas on Dennis' neck about how the uh, truly, uh, t- uh, true, truly original or true entertainment Bravo channel is spinning the story to favor Dennis than it is favor you. I'm like, what? Where we do that at and why? Okay, where is that train of thinking coming from? When you call yourself being an EP, you take orders. You do. You make people do this, that, and the third. 
still one or two big spun of the show as the go-getter, the trendsetter, the one that's on fire in a good way. Why is your ex boyfriend? Because that's pretty much what you were. Why is he getting all the love? Why is he getting all the adoration? Why are we calling this the dentist family matters? Okay. And the only thing you have is animosity. And you're trying to tell us something that's going to be shown more than likely this Sunday coming up. That's going to pl plant you, put you in an uncomfortable, unfavorable edit. And you trying to come out here and do damage control before we even get a chance to see what you're referring to? What kind of shit is that, Portia? That's really underhanded, other cutthroat type of thinking. Girl, I'm just I'm just saying. You need to cut ties. And I ain't gonna tell you which way to cut the ties. But if your family member are pushing you up to marry rich, get the money, so all y'all can be set. You need to cut that train of thinking and think about your longevity and what you want your legacy to be for PJ to follow in your footsteps. Because right now, it ain't that but trash. Trash, trash, trash. I know you know better, and I know you can do better. So you need to stop having all these people be enablers. And yes, everybody you have around you that you have shown on TV, on social media, that had a voice and said something, all of them are not for you. They're not out for your good. They're not out to want to see you excel in a positive way. It just is what it is. But that's all I have for this video, guys. If y'all like it, love it, and y'all find some truth into Cordell telling his truth about what Portia really did. That she didn't have to be homeless if she would have paid them damn taxes on that property that was hers. It would have still been hers. And she didn't have to go uh, with her tail between her legs back to her mama house moving her mama out her master bedroom and where they do that at and why all the way my daughter would have my master bedroom if she was sick and she had tubes uh because she was resting in a uh what do you call it a patient bed uh that you have at the hospital and she was bedridden or whatever she just had to have all these different tubes and her originally room that she moved out of wasn't big enough to hold that. That's the only way she would get my master bedroom. Other than that, I was like, girl, if you don't go back to which you came, which was back up in your childhood room, make it work. The other stuff, if it can't get in my house and don't take away from my personality that I founded in my home, put it in storage. That's how that conversation would have been. It would be you bringing all your, your creature comforts, all your uh, stuff you had in the house featuring here's Portia, Portia lives here and all that kind of shit, memorabilia, it would have been in the storage. I'm like, baby girl, we have a bed that's already there. You didn't want your bed when you took it, but you got your, your high school bed in there. You got all your high school memorabilia. Do whatever you want. Throw it to the trash. I don't care. I don't give a shit. It was yours. You could bring in your furniture that's going to fit right in that room. Other than that, kick rocks. And I would have kept it moving. Okay? Because you have to learn from your experience. If it's not a good experience, only you can change it. Only you can make it better. Okay? I will be your sounding boy. I will be your, what do you call it? Uh, your support system if you need it. But you're not going to come up a hill. You don't left me. You said this was the man of your dreams. He was everything you wanted. And I co-signed and gave you away at your wedding. Then just as long as he didn't beat you. He didn't mentally abuse you. I ain't see no scratches. I ain't see no thought patterns changes. From what I already knew you had. Then we Gucci. But if you know any of that happened. Then I'm on his ass like white on rice. Okay. Like Mother Joy said. Ain't no valley low no, Ain't no river wide no, Ain't no mountain high enough to keep me from getting on your ass. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. But if none of those infractions happen. What can I say baby. You made a bad decision. It's okay. 
Come on home. Get yourself together. And then, you know, go, go when you can, you know. But it ain't no revolving door. Because once you leave this time, that's it. Now, if you have any church, sure, come back. You, I'm going to be questioning you once again. Once again, okay? Because three strikes and you're out. And that's pretty much all I had. I just thought that was a good discussion to have. Because Cordell telling his side. Portia done told her side. We know how she can lie, lie, and then lie. We can make a song out of her just lying, okay? And then we have the truth. So we have to decipher. We have to, like, digest, dissect, uh, put the pieces back together, take them apart again, and look at it from other different perspectives, and get our true take on what could have actually happened, okay? That's all I got, y'all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Remember, happy holidays. Be with your family because that's the best kept secret that's out there. Love on them. Take care of yourselves during this epidemic thing we're going through. And I think I'm going to get me some steam to my nostrils because I'm getting kind of stuffy. But I had to get that story out because I know... Y'all going to be eating, passing out, sleeping, get back up, doing the same doing thing again, playing with your grandchildren, playing with your children with their toys and thinking about you all's childhood when y'all were growing up, some things you did get and you wanted, some things y'all got, y'all tore that shit up. Whew, I know a lot of flood of memories, good and bad, are flooding your memories, and just get through it the best way you can and know, hey, Mama Deb love you. Cousin Deb love you. Auntie Deb love you. Grandmama Deb love you. And whenever you get sad and you want a little cheat, cheat, chuckle, chuckle, come on over to home. Come over to the house. Come on home and we'll give you a laugh or two. But other than that, see y'all next video. Be blessed.